TBC Center presents The Sphere of Influence. The Sphere of Influence is the TV ministry of the baptizing church where everyone is blessed, lifted, edified, strengthened, and encouraged by the word of faith and the power of the Spirit. For further inquiries, please log on to www.tbccenter.org or visit TBC Center New Road Bus Stop. Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria. The world works. He's lifting up positions. He's breaking barriers. He's shifting the boundaries. He's starting a new thing with you. He's mm. starting a new thing with you. space when you get home the Lord is calling for our hearts he's calling for our hearts and if you respond you will enter a place that the former generation could not step into you will come into depths in God that they saw with their eyes but they were not opportune to step into as we come to the final hour God is so much more generous with himself than ever before so if you are a seeker if you are a chaser after God, if your heart is burning, if your heart is hungry and thirsty for righteousness, you'll be filled to an overflowing that our fathers did not taste. Because God is pouring himself generously in the final hour. And I pray that your heart is going to be chasing after God. That you will know in your life that if we seek the kingdom, other things will be added to us. And you will go in this rapturous pursuit of eternal life and the ways of God. And you'll be rewarded with God himself. I pray that the Lord rewards you with himself. In the name of Jesus Christ. I just want to stir you for a few minutes um, on faith for the harvest. Faith for the harvest. I believe that there's a word in the Father's heart that he wants to put in your spirit. And it will become a gift that keeps giving. Because out of that one seed of his word... He will begin to speak to you in volumes of more specific things that he wants to do with your life this year. The beginning of faith is when the will of God is revealed. And so you cannot really step into what is yours until you see clearly what the Father is set to do. And so those who will walk into epic dimensions of the breakthroughs that the Lord has reserved for his sons and daughters this year and for the glorious marvels that he has preserved for the church are the people who will spend time with him to uncover his blueprint, to uncover his master plan, to see his heart. It's time to see the Father's heart. Not what we've been told about God or what we think we know about God, but what God is wanting to share with us about himself. And I pray that's your portion in Jesus' name. So I just want to share um, shortly a word that I believe is such a now word that the Lord has put in my spirit for you and is going to profit you in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, Pastor Dejus sends his great regard. He 
as you might know, if you were around on Thursday, he announced it. He is ministering today at Out of Zion. Pastor Dele has just returned from his very long trip, and he returned with a lot of testimonies. That's a good place to rejoice, actually. That's a very good place to rejoice. He returned with a lot of testimonies. I mean, God gave him the land of Canada, and tremendous things were done through the Lord's servant. So I guess he's, I mean, he just wants to have a family meeting. He wants to chill. Um, today is his first Sunday back after a while. And Pastor Digi is um, preaching over there today. So I am so privileged to be able to share God's word with you. And I know that it will profit you. Let us look at John chapter 4. John chapter 4 from verse 27. And at this time, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, what do you say or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the men, come see a man who told me all the things I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then the city went then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. And he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. 32, therefore, he said, 33, therefore the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you... Do you not say, there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. He, and he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. 37, for in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. Amen. He said, my food, my satisfaction, my pleasure is to do the will of him who sent me. The will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And to finish his work, do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages, and he who gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored, others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. Hallelujah. This is a profound piece of scripture. He says, he who sows and he who reaps should rejoice together. Because as far as the kingdom agenda is concerned, the cycle of sowing and reaping does not rest in one individual. As far as the agenda of the kingdom is concerned, we are all players in an extensive value chain that did not begin with us and will not end with us. Amen. So oftentimes the message of faith may make you see, have a micro vision of what God is doing and localize it only to your reality. But the broader picture of what the Lord is doing with the kingdom vision is that you are a partaker and a participant of an agenda that is bigger than us all. Hallelujah. So the principle of sowing and reaping as far as the Lord is concerned is not that you will reap where you sow, but you will reap what you sow. Hallelujah. It's not that you are in absolute control of the harvest that is coming, but you can trigger a process. And see with your eyes a city whose maker and builder is God. And that there is this chain connecting the former generation with the oncoming generation. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So this is important and is intriguing because it is a scriptural symbolism speaking to every believer today. 
Not only those who are sent to be ministry gifts have an assignment for the from the Father. Every single individual today who has said yes to receive the life of Jesus Christ have been sent by the Father. Every single one of us, even if you will never need to stand on a pulpit, even if you will never need to hold a mic, there is a definite definite agenda of God. You are not a meaningless statistic. You are not just a name and an email address on a database. You are not just a number counted in a population census. You are not just a woman who makes up a certain percentage of the demographic. You are not just a young person thrown out there as a number on World Bank statistics about youth in the world in Africa. Amen. You are a destiny. You are the idea of God. You are uh, an investment of the Father on the earth. His eyes are on you specifically. So when God is thinking about you, he has a clear agenda and a clear vision over your life. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. You are here because you were sent. You are an envoy with a message. You've been commissioned with a mission. There's work in your hands. And when you have a mission, you don't need permission. You don't need to wait to be encouraged. You don't need to wait to be given a name. You don't need to wait to be given a platform. And I think that's what my generation has waited for for so long. People think they must have a website, a business to their name, a logo, and a title to do something significant for God. But he's saying you don't need permission to serve your mission. Because your mission is key to the overall agenda of the Father. So as long as one, two, four are not playing their part of the ten, we keep slowing down the harvest that can come in. He said you are mentioning four months, that there's still some time before the harvest. But li lift up your eyes and see. Lift up your eyes and see that the harvest is ripe. And it is time to dive in. Hallelujah. Now you can look at your own life and count four months before the harvest. You can look at your life and feel like, well, I'm, I'm still very young. I'm in process. God can't use me in a significant way yet. I just started my business. I just entered the agricultural industry. I just even discovered my purpose. Hallelujah. So it's still just many months before the harvest. But the Father is saying something, and I, I hope, I, I believe in the name of Jesus, you will hear me with your inner ears. This is what the Lord is saying. You're looking ahead and saying, God can't even pass a message from my marriage. Well, because it's been three years of trial and errors. We've made so many mistakes. We, we were not yet a model marriage. Christ, Christ and the church is not yet exemplified in us. I'm just 24 and my career is two and a half years old. I just moved from internship to a full placement. So I don't even have a say in that industry yet. I just discovered my purpose. I just recognized that there's a calling on my life. But the father is saying, it's not four months from the harvest because you are looking ahead to the harvest on the basis of your seed in the ground. But I'm saying to you that you can step into a harvest of the seed of those who went ahead of you. So you are not in absolute control of the start to finish or process. So you see, even though it sounds noble, and sometimes you are saying, you say, let's honor process. I don't deserve to be in the forefront of that industry yet because I don't even know everything about it. And the father is saying that I raised a son 30 years before you came who spent days and hours in bended intercession that a son of righteousness will arise in the final hour who will overtake that industry. You are the man for the job and there is already intense, in, in, intercession investment over your life. You are not here alone. When scripture was saying, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, bearing the shame and is now set at the right hand side of God. He said, so therefore run your race with patience, laying aside every besetting sin, for you are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. There are things that Abraham prayed for and he could not experience because it was not yet the maturation of time. And that prayer is answered in Lawrence. Amen. So the harvest 
is not about what was started with us. The harvest is about what is culminating in us. The harvest is not about reaping a reward on what we did. It is about reaping a reward of what was done in our name. There are things that were done in the name of my generation. There were prayers that were made in the name of my generation. There's a sacrifice that fathers of faith made so that they can elevate an example of Christian character and ministry effectiveness that I can step into today. I don't have to wait to be 20 years doing ministry before I wield power as of old. Hallelujah. So this is the first fundamental understanding about how we will step into the harvest. That I'm not here alone. I'm not merely my mother and father's second child. My life's journey is not just a, that is something year journey of finding God. I am an abstraction of an eternal ongoing story. Amen. Glory to God. I am on a marathon. It's not a sprint. A baton was passed to me. You see, and that baton that was passed to me came with rights and responsibilities, came with terms and conditioning, amen, or conditions. The button that was passed to me has an advantage that has accumulated over the years by the labors of those who went ahead of me. I must lay a demand on that button. What must happen in my life must not be the, re the result of my intercession alone. It must be the culmination of generations who prayed that a day will arise that a woman will have a voice. She will be fearless in her generation. She will birth an untold revival. She will awaken a new church, a new movement of seemingly faceless, nameless, unknown people who will stand at the forefront of a work for God. Hallelujah. So the next time a young man is in sexual temptation, Joseph is hoping that the button that he passed to that man will carry weight and will give him the strength of character to say, why will I do such great wickedness and sin against my God? That what John, uh, Joseph had done in his consecration will count for you today. That it doesn't matter if you just said yes to Jesus four days ago. You will not be relying on how long you have been in that relationship with the Lord, but there's a button of Joseph that you can lay claim to. Hallelujah. He said it's time. You say the harvest is four months. I say that the fields are already ripe. Now what he's talking about primarily, and, and we need to address this because it's profound and it is so instructive. You say the harvest is four months because you are calculating how long it takes for the seed you put into the ground to become ripe for harvest. But I say that the fields are already white in the world and you can step into it. What the Lord is saying is that I am the custodian of your process. I trigger the A to Z of your journey. A process can be five years and it can be five hours. I'm in control of that. Hallelujah. I'm in control of that. Glory to God. So the next time you think about seed and harvest, don't think about what you are doing alone. Think about what Jesus has done for you. Think about what the matrix of faith have done concerning you. Amen, amen, amen. Let's look at Hebrews 11. It's time for the harvest. It's time for the harvest. And we already see this happening. Even with preaching the gospel and receiving the harvest of souls. You see, because a person doesn't say yes to Jesus based on the dexterity of your preaching adventure, usually the moment that they say yes is a crowning moment. It's just a final trigger after a series of events have been occurring. Hallelujah. An unbeliever is currently on a journey to Jesus Christ. He's having righteous encounters. His heart is becoming more tender. A word here, a word there. A worship here, a worship there. Strain into church, getting into a, a crusade ground, reading a book, listening to a colleague at work. Things are coming together. Remembering something that a church, a, a pastor said when he was growing up. Remembering the example of his mom in the face of a bad marriage. All of that. There are triggers in the value chain. Hallelujah. And on one moment, Tony is feeling like, 
I'm just even getting my relationship right. Why are you asking me to talk to this person? You're on your way to work and you just get into this conversation. And you are holding back. The Lord is saying, step into the harvest. It's taken 30 years of a pile of a value chain. You know, what's, what's the word? It's not even value chain. A chain of events. What, what creates that final tipping, tipping point? A critical mass. So the Lord is saying that there, there are events that have been happening, accumulating over time. You are standing on the tipping point. Amen. You are standing on the tipping point. You open your mouth and you say basic stuff. You see, I've seen in my own life how the love of Jesus saved me from my pains and my feelings of insecurity and he can do the same for you. And she breaks down crying. It's not what you said. It's the fact that you were standing on a tipping point. That's what is happening in the world, in the body of Christ today. The Lord says to me to announce to you a prophetic tipping point. Not just for the church, but for the kingdom. The church is only a subset of the kingdom. The church is the administrative headquarters where the Holy Spirit impacts you with what you require to work in the kingdom. Kingdom is actually Monday to Saturday. Kingdom is the the mountain of politics and governance, the mountain of family, the mountain of education, the mountain of entertainment, where you, you are sent in fashion and agriculture and financial services. You are intending with a boss, he's 63 years old, he wants to have an intimate affair with you. You are in a tipping point. If you look today, here's what you must never forget. What, whenever you Fling forth your shield of faith in absolute honor to what you believe in your heart God has told you to do. When you are walking in obedience, when there is a relationship, there's an intersection between obedience and faith. Whenever you release your shield of faith, you will have the highest impact in the shortest possible time. That's what a tipping point means. That the moment, look, it's like when a balloon is blown full. And you're just coming with your pin. You are just coming with your pin. The moment you puncture into it, it's going to give you the highest type of deflation. Hallelujah. You are in a prophetic tipping point. What was difficult before has now been made easy. Because you are stepping into the harvest of those who have gone ahead of you. Of others. And that's what he was promising you in Deuteronomy. Look, we're in the days where you will live in houses you did not build. You will overtake cities you did not construct. You will drink from wells you did not dig. And you will eat from orchards you did not plant. Because as you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he'll begin to add other things to you. There are people who are busy acquiring properties. And they do not know now, but it is so that they are acquiring it for you. There are people who have received a scholarship for a PhD program in Harvard University, and they are going because of you, because you are being sent as a public policy analyst to African countries, and you need a gatekeeper on the other side of social innovation in Harvard, that as you continue to hone your skill and build yourself on that conviction and ordination in the fullness of time, they are done with with their PhD, they come for a wedding in Nigeria, they sit on the table with you, you think it's an ordinary moment, but it took God five years to consummate that prophetic experience. They are seated on the table with you, you get talking and they say, oh my God, we've been looking for a public policy expert. The things that men with money cannot enter into, a gatekeeper takes you right into it. Glory to God. Hmm. That's the hour we're in. That's the hour we're in. That's the hour we're in. You don't get. It's not about me. It's about the tipping point. It's what is available to every believer. We're in the tipping point. Sakolade, you are standing at a tipping point. You're looking at your industry and you're feeling like you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are feeling like you even made a, a wrong move. What am I doing with this whole painting thing? How is this going to work out? But there's a construction industry. Because whenever there's a wealth shift, the real estate industry is the first to press into it. You are standing on a tipping point of an entire industry that has broken open. You can be overbooked in billions of dollars. No kidding. 
Because God knows that if I put money in Kolade's hands, it will enter the kingdom. It is in God's best interest to put the resources in your hand. Stop acting as though you are a grasshopper on the earth. So you see, the thing you maybe want to begin to pray for is an enlargement of your mindset to know you are the man for the job and that the God of the universe is routing resources to you. I'm telling you, it's in the epic prayers and we're taking it together. People are working hard because of me. They are having sleepless nights working on proposals for me. For me. People are buying houses today in Banana Island for me. You see, because you must shift from thinking you need money to knowing that you want what money can get. So I'm not saying, Lord, I need so I'm saying these are the things I need. Take it off. So families will be having sleepless nights on my matter. Does it make sense that two grown adults will agree between themselves that they can't bought in millions will be handed to another young person like them? And at least you can believe me or the logo. I did, my brother, I didn't have any here for share that I leaked. It's just the radiance of... You see, when it is time for heaven to be imposed on earth, people will lose use of natural reasoning because it's a compelling of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you. So I was coming into Nigeria. And a friend said, you're coming to Nigeria. I need you to help me drop something for DDK. She has never met me. She has only read Firebrand and maybe followed me online and taken online courses. I need you to give something to DDK. She said, my flight is very early in the morning. She quickly got into work in the UK, took a train, dropped her child at the press. She said she panted. The person gave to me said, she panted into the airport. You understand? Like running in just as that one was about to start to board. So she's like, I wasn't going to wait for you. She ran inside. Handed an in I handed her a bag. It must get to Lagos. I beg you. Just let me give DDK. Fantastic designer bag. I was still so blown away by it. Only for me to see inside. Crisp pound sterling. Thousands of crisp pound sterling. She's working in the UK. She's compelled to move that resources to me in Nigeria. Amen. People will transfer money to me. It will be weird statements. So it will be weird numbers. So you know something is going on. When you receive 431,872 naira, what are you receiving? Tithe or everything in the person's account. Yes. Those are weird numbers. It's not 150K. It's not 1 million. It's not, it's not 500K. Numbers that show you there's a story behind this. Guess what? Sometimes I don't know who. We are in a tipping point. So if you release your faith, to reach a million souls for Jesus, this is the year it is achievable. Because there's something called angelic publicity. That's what happened. That's, that's, a, that's a move, a dimension that the scripture was showing us in John 4. Because scripture started to talk to us about this woman, how she ran into the city and announced to them, come and see a man who has told me everything I ever did. Could he be the Christ? Scripture said they came out. From the city, Jesus was not in the city. He was in the outskirts. They traveled in their droves to Jesus on the announcement of a man. Look, it takes one influencer, one gatekeeper to announce you to his industry and you will step in. You think trainers that earn millions of naira training for telecoms and all companies are better than those who earn 150 and 200k? Sweating for days in SMEs, no. It's a gatekeeper. The son who is listening to them and who has said, as the Lord lives and his spirit also, beyond a doubt, I want this person in. A number of the big opportunities I've experienced wasn't about any resume submitted. If you're on the resume lane of life, you are in a lower lane of life. There's a word of mouth lane of life. There's a decision maker lane of life. There's a policy formulator lane of life where someone who is the final, is the owner of the final signature, says, I want her. You are not listening to me. I said, I want call her. What's the conversation? Why are they submitting proposals? Those that you buy paint from, who are the fathers of the industry, will be set aside so you can enter. Because someone insists, someone becomes stubborn that you are the man for the job. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. You saw the guy who, who created... 
um, an artwork of Kevin Hart. He's been creating that artwork. Normally, he will paint stars and he will give them for free. Thank you so much. He did it for Kevin Hart. How much did he say he was going to put on it? Mad money. Now, Kevin Hart saw it, paid for it, shared it with his Hollywood stars friend. As at now, the guy has done for seven stars and is earning in tens of thousands of dollars. The very same thing he has done and was paid nothing for. In Nigeria, or he put up for 50K, 100K, 200K, 250K, 500K. While, while a, an author is here calculating, if I can sell 500 copies of my book of 2,000, that's 1 million. He's pacing like this, 1 million, 500 copies. If I go to a conference and I, I challenge them, and they buy 500, what conference can I speak at where they'll buy 500 copies? Someone takes the book to an association in CIPM and recommends it as the recommended reading for that diet. And there are almost 700,000 people across the country who are mandated to buy it. When there is a woman at the west, she has influence. She be babe. They want not taste down. So when she announces that there's a fresh guy in town, they are wondering who the arrival is. They want to hear from him. Don't over-spiritualize this conversation. Because if you do, you will miss gatekeepers because they are Muslims. They are Muslims waiting to power the purpose of God in your life. Amen. They are MDs of government parastatals. Igbo smoking, but they will be compelled under the move of the Spirit. Glory to God. They will be compelled under the move of the Spirit because it's a tipping point. It's a consummation of all things. God is conditioning the environment to respond to you. So you must elevate your vision. You must elevate your vision. And you must begin to say, Lord, how are you going to use what I have for your glory? He must show you, just like Pastor Dejalade Aladejabi shared on the wedding party. You must see how this is Jesus' party. You must see how you are standing on a corner of the kingdom agenda. How what you are doing connects to a greater good, a greater vision in the heart of the Father. We're not here for ourselves. I'm not here to play small. I'm not here just to have a fantastic marriage, a cool house in a great neighborhood, raising excellent kids, going to the best schools. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to hit my generation like the tornado of Jesus hitting it. I'm here to elevate what is possible when a woman is a yielded vessel. I'm here to radically transform the conversations around how the nonprofit sector can fix the debacle that Africa finds itself. I'm here to write books that stir holy emotions in the hearts of men. I'm here to make Jesus more attractive. I'm here to show women that it is possible to balance kingdom and to take your place in kingship in the realm of men in business. I'm here to do the literal impossible. If Jesus is looking for a public address system, May he find it in me. May he find it in me. May he find it in me. Ah, that's a good point to say yours. If Jesus is looking for a public address system, may he find it in me. May he find my sharpened giftings. May he find my weakest places. May he find my dexterous abilities. May he find my hesitations and my fears. May he find my submission and my consecration. May he find everything that I am and use it to tell a compelling story of great grace on the earth. I want it to be known through me that God is real. That when you look at my case, you can see that there's an unseen hand that directs and redirects the affairs of men. I don't want to live and enjoy life directly proportional to my ability. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm not here to do that. I'm here for the epic. I'm here for what I cannot enter except the Lord open the door. And we're in the moment where the Lord is opening the door. So don't be small in your thinking. Don't be small in your thinking. It's time for the harvest. It's time for the impossible. It's time to know that the assignment you've been given through business in an industry is kingdom. Because there are some people you will never reach in church. And that is why I'm committed to being a multi-influential woman. When I'm standing in the public sector, I will stand strong. When I'm standing in entrepreneurship, I will stand strong. When I'm standing in ministry, I will stand strong. So he who I cannot reach in ministry, let us meet at United Nations. Same Jesus. Same Jesus. 
that's what I'm here to do. I'm not here to harass the world with my tongues. I want to be prayed up in tongues for a different reason. I want to be one with the power that is alive in me. Not to, not to bend the will of men to say, I'm a, I'm a woman of God, you must listen. I want to teach coaching frameworks that are rooted in scripture, but I will not quote the chapter and the verse. Amen. I want to confront deep-seated business ideologies, rewrite history through the mysteries I find in Isaiah without mentioning Isaiah. I want to speak in the language that they understand, but my nativity is from heaven. That's what I'm here to do. The game is changed, guys. Believers are going to experience diverse kinds of shifts in this hour. They are prophetic shifts. There's the power shift where all of a sudden, regardless of your tribe and gender and age, you are elevated by the ladder of God with angels ascending and descending. Angels ascending and descending. What they are doing is they are taking those who are the lower rung of the ladder, but who are the name of the Lord Most High, elevating them supernaturally. In a twinkle of an eye, you will be transformed. It's a certain kind of rapture. It's a career rapture. All of a sudden, you are in front desk. A few years down the line, you are a partner. Look, as long as you say one day, one day, then you are excluded. But I'm not saying one day, I'm saying it is possible. Power shifts. Shifting you into decision-making opportunities. Putting you face to face. Putting your word as power and law in the heart of decision-makers. Who on the realm of the earth have the final say to an issue. Glory be to God. Power shifts. Making you an influencer. Turning the attention of your industry to you. Elevating your name and carrying it on the wings of the spirit. Double objects. You've been doing the same thing just like Pastor Dejikumi says. Same thing. Elevated results is the 10x factor of the Holy Ghost. Exponent. So look, the conversation here is not merely upskilling. It is pressing into the shift. Because what you have is actually enough. Double objects and you're just like we've been here we've been here all the while then I'll say come and replicate this model in South Africa come over to Kenya you are, you are busy and that's why the thing we do these days is not just that we upskill it is that just like Abraham we train the servants in our household for battle because a day is coming when I will not be able to cover the briefs I must have raised an Alexandra who can go and stand for me in a leading oil and gas company speaking with greater authority than I can speak. That is how fathers truly are. Fathers must raise fathers. It's one that you are the Lord and master of your business. The, the designs, now only you know them. Everything, you're just hiding it. You are not ready for the expansion. You see, because when it says, let your net down, you can't catch the harvest on your own. Mm -mm. There'll be the power shift. There'll be the time shift. Things that should take three years will take three months. Listen, I speak to you by the Holy Ghost. We are in that hour. We are in the consummation of all things. Delays will be collapsed into reward for your hard work. Amen. For your trouble, you will have double. For your waiting, you will be berated with the goodness of God. Time shifts. Things will just start to close up sharply. And when you tell the story of where you've been, you will look so radically different from me, people will believe you are lying. Time shifts. There will be wealth shifts. Where there will be exponential commercial reward and value in exchange for your giftings. Same giftings. Same giftings. You see, because it's not the weapon that matters. It is how you wield it. The way you wield your gifting is that you see eye to eye with God. That that little thing in your hand is what he will roll out from his quiver to transform your generation. No longer will I think that I just like to talk. No longer will I ever think that I'm just a natural writer. I'm saying that I am a mouth in the body of Christ. I'm saying that my words do not fall to the ground. That when I speak, I awaken desire in kings and priests. That they look upon me, presidents of economies, governors of nations, captains of industries. They set their gaze upon me and they say, there is no more to say. For in you we have found the spirit of the living God. That you will step into government. You will give counsel to the federal government. And it will be yeah and amen. Your mouth. Wealth 
shift. The way you wield your giftings is to stop looking at it as a talent. Stop it. Just a natural talent, my natural hobby. No, it is my five stones and a sling. It's going right for the forehead of Goliath. Wealth shift. People will lay up treasures in real estate and they will by themselves be doing the change of ownership. By themselves. You'll be saying, please, are you sure? <laughs> and they're begging you, please stop begging me. Wealth shift. Transfer of resources. It will shake the system so that God's she can be unseated and an orphan girl can step into position. I'm telling you, vividly, I'm seeing it. There are things I can't share at this level, but I'm seeing it's real. God is not joking. He's real. Wealth shift. People start to look for what you have. They begin to look for what you have. They begin to look for what you have. The day I was coming to Apostle Selman's meeting, went to minister in a church, was being driven back by a very beloved sister and one of my um, daughters. Mm. And you know, we were drinking yogurt. I just felt what I feel when a meeting, <sighs> we're in a car, we're drinking yogurt, we're laughing. All of a sudden, I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit so heavy in the car. So I paused and I started to pray in tongues under my breath. I'm like, what is going on? What are you doing here? <laughs> so he said, declare that I will reorder this conversation to accomplish an agenda in my heart now. So I said under my breath, Father, thank you. Because you reordered this conversation to fulfill an agenda in your heart in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. So we kept talking. The babe who was driving just said, hmm, God has been good to me this year. I got into an architectural deal with the MD of so, so so Bank. We wrote for sponsorship to that bank for our Women in Development Summit, which, by the way, everyone should be at. Uh, to partner with us, do this with us, and we want it to be long-term because we're truly going to deliver value. I said, I did it with them. Man, these guys are in a lot of money. They don't even know what to do with it. So I got so, so presented. My life has changed. I can't even tell my parents. I said, calm down. It's the wealth shift, but you're not talking like you understand the purpose of it. Because this is how God commends wealth to us. We must recognize why he is moving the wealth into the church. We must know why. So it doesn't destroy us. So the moment she mentioned the, the guy, uh, that in fact she has a personal email, uh, I'm just like, thank you, Holy Ghost. So I said, do I talk now? He said, no, I'm not now. Let her come to Apostle Selman. I will enter her well. So she came. She even said, Didike, please, I need to let him pray for me. I'm like, I got you, girl. I got you because I need you. Come over. You know, and he prayed for her and all of that. So I sent my project director to talk to her about the fact that we already had a proposal in. She said, uh, no, don't worry. Print a fresh one. I will call his direct PO. We submit it on so so date. He will be out of country for this time. I will send him an email that I'm with the organization. He will come back because we're in the tipping point and you're about to step into the harvest of those who went before you. And I promise you, their labor is probably greater than our labor today. I'm saying you are entering into the warfare of Abraham. You are entering into the intercession of Anna the widow. I said you are entering into the accuracy of Paul. I said you are entering into the energy, the vision, the integrity of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said you are entering into the courage of Esther. I said you are entering into the military formation of Barak and Deborah. That's what you are entering into. You are entering into the multiplier wealth effect of Isaac. You are way entering into the name changing covenant of Jacob of Israel. That's what you are entering into. Take what is yours in the name of Jesus. Take what is yours in the name of Jesus. We activate the power of the covenant of the harvest. We are in tipping point. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rejoice! Hey. Rejoice! You can't be sitting and pressing into that kind of rejoicing. Rejoice!